good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service here this morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Andy Smith. Uh, it's my pleasure and joy to welcome you here, both in church and those who are joining us online. Thank you for being with us today. We've gathered today to praise and worship God, to spend time with him, to learn more about his great love for us, and to allow him to work in our lives. Can I invite you to stand wherever you are, in church, watching online, as we read together some words from Psalm 95, which invites us to come and praise the Lord. So I'll read the first verses, a um, few verses, and then there'll be a point where it says all together, and then if you'd all like to join in with me. Come, let us praise the Lord. Let us sing for joy to God who protects us. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and sing joyful songs of praise. For the Lord is a mighty God, a mighty king over all the gods. He rules over the whole earth, from the deepest caves to the highest hills. He rules over the sea which he made, the land also which he himself formed. Come, let us bow down and worship him. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. He is our God. We are the people he cares for, the flock for which he provides. Let us pray. Almighty sovereign God, fill our hearts this morning as we come to worship you. You are the good shepherd. You know each of us by name. And when we wandered away from you, as is our nature, you came looking for us. And when you found us, you lifted us onto your shoulders, brought us home, and celebrated with the angels in heaven for our safe return. And despite everything you have done for us, we still have the tendency to stray. Forgive us. Help us to hear once more your voice calling us to follow you, to bow down and worship you, to kneel before you, our maker. Lord Jesus, bring us this morning into the presence of your Father. Holy Spirit, inspire our worship. Let us hear you speaking to us in song, prayer, and through the scriptures. And may we respond with our whole being to surrender to the one who loves us to the uttermost. Turn us into disciples determined to follow Jesus, to obey his teachings, and to be ready to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. Move us on in our journey of faith. Let us live as citizens of heaven. To be determined to do the right thing. To lift up the downtrodden and brokenhearted. And to see right and justice prevail. To bring healing. To be channels of forgiveness your agents of change and bearers of the good news of salvation in Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. So, as we have already declared, let's praise the Lord with thanksgiving and with joyful song. And let us remain standing as we sing, Praise is Rising.
please do be seated. Well, I wasn't expecting to be standing here today, but unfortunately Tom is still unable to be with us. But all being well, isolation for him and the family will end on Wednesday. Unfortunately, members of the family tested positive for COVID-19 last week, which extended their stay at home. But Tom will be with us, is with us online, good morning Tom, and has pre-recorded today's sermon. And we shall pray for him and the family later in the service, very shortly in fact. So please keep them in your prayers. Today we are continuing our journey through Mark. We're almost there, We've got one more week to go. And today the story reaches a climactic point. Looking at Jesus' declaration that he is the Messiah and the profound effect that had on those who heard him say that and the life-changing implication it has for all of us. And we'll be worshipping too in song and prayer and be inviting people here in the church to lead us in our intercessory prayer. But first, some notices. Painting the Fellowship Hall. Over the summer, we're looking to paint the Fellowship Hall and we would welcome volunteers who would like to come and help. If you're interested, please let Tom know. I've written down here, the more the merrier. I'm not sure that's always true, but the more the merrier. Do come along. Uh, bring your paintbrushes, bring your rollers, and let's have time of fellowship as we paint the fellowship hall. A reminder that uh, after the service here next Sunday, we're going to have a church meeting. That's going to take place at 11.45. And it will be a hybrid meeting, so opportunity for people who are unable to be with us in church to join online. Uh, the agenda will come out this week, and included on that, we'll have all the details for joining the meeting on Zoom. And Tom has asked if you've got any uh, questions uh, that you uh, are prompted when you read through the agenda, please could you email him or Steve ahead of the meeting? That would help them enormously. Um, and some of the items, the main items, are to pick up some details from our recent special church meeting to consider the requests from food bank to rent the mayfield hall i said fellowship hall last week it uh, meant the mayfield hall for possibly up to a year during the refurbishment and redesign of their current warehouse facilities um, us being able to do that would keep a valued service available to the community and that's one of the things we want to discuss next week we're also looking at rediscovering and re-experiencing the joy of fellowship after so many months when we've been unable to gather together. And we do realise that even after the restrictions lift tomorrow, there'll be some people who'll be very hesitant about returning to the church building. So our proposal is that um, uh, to meet together as a fellowship in Priory Park in the Sunday mornings in August. Now this won't be for a service, but it will be to be church, God's people gathered together as a fellowship. So hope that that will be something that many people who, even if they're a little hesitant about coming into church, will feel much more comfortable in meeting in the open air. And so uh, more details of that will follow in the next week or so. Our AGM is happening on the 26th of September. And we need, at that meeting, to be ready to appoint new members to the leadership. So please, please uh, pray to identify people within our fellowship who have a servant heart who would be able to serve on the leadership. And if a person's name comes to mind, please let Tom know. You'll have heard us mention Kintsuki Hope in the church in recent months. Kintsuki Hope is about discovering beauty in the scars of life. And the first course that we held at the church ended this week. And I'd like to invite you to pray for those who took part and also to give thanks for Sharon and Anna who led the course. We're looking to run another course in September. And if you're interested in taking part in that, please let Sharon know. Now, as you know, preschool broke up for the last time on Tuesday and Chris and Katie joined in their last day and Chris is going to come and share with us something of what happened on that morning. Thank you, Chris.
Good morning. Uh, we have some photos of preschools last morning, which Katie and I joined. But obviously, we can't show you any that include the children, so we're a bit limited as to what we can show you. But these are the gifts that we gave to the staff. They're silver bracelets with three charms on them. And we also, Katie also wrote a lovely little card that explained what they were all about. And again, that's part of the gifts that we gave to them, the tree of life. And we gave them a plant as well. That's what the preschool looked like on the outside. The staff had got the children to <coughs> sorry, draw pictures of themselves, which they laminated, and they put up on like a washing line. And then when the children went, they all collected them. Looked really good. This is just how the staff set up for a party for the children. Can't see the balloons so well, but they set it all up beautifully for them. This is the preschool gift to the children, which they were specially made for them. On the back of the bumblebee, it says Preschool 2021. And it's got a little verse and things in there of remembrance of preschool. Yeah, you can read it now. Is that it? One more, okay. Oh, yeah, and we included, as a gift from the church, a Bible for each of the children, and this is the Bible that we gave them. So uh, the staff had worked really hard to give the children a lovely party, and judging from the noise, the children had a great time. Most of the children wore their party clothes, and as you can see, the staff decorated the tables with the balloons for their McDonald's, and they set places for Katie and I too. There were a couple of hiccups, the balloons were very late in arriving, and when they did, the weights were little balloons filled with water. <laughs> we had to do some remedial work on that. <clears throat> After they'd eaten, Katie got the children to cheer the staff, and we gave them their gifts from the church and thanked them for all their hard work on your behalf. And you can see some of the lovely gifts that they'd taken a lot of time and effort to get for the children. When the children left, the staff went outside and parents took photographs of the children and the staff together and Nikki said a few words, including thanking the church for all their support. Nikki asked us to stay behind and she had gifts for Tom, Katie and I with messages from the staff to thank us for all our help and support and asking if they could keep in touch. So there were a few tears, but it was a lovely morning and a happy and enjoyable conclusion to preschool. Thank you very much, Chris. Let's take a moment to pray. Our loving Lord Jesus, we bring all the items in our notices to you. We pray for Tom and the family. Thank you for them. Lord, you know this has been something of a miserable time for all of them. And we pray for the members of the family who are recovering from COVID. Lord, we pray that they will emerge safe and well on Wednesday and enjoy the freedom. We pray for next week's church meeting, an important part of our communal discipleship. And we pray into the request from Food Bank to support them in their work. We pray into the proposal of rediscovering joy of fellowship over the summer in Priory Park and for the painting of the Fellowship Hall. And we pray for our AGM that you will encourage us prayerfully to identify people who could serve as members of the leadership and that you'll be working in their lives, preparing them for this role. We thank you for Kinsuki Hope. Be with all those who took part and bless them in their onward journey. Thank you for the leading that Sharon and Anna provided and pray that you'll be with them and the other leaders as we begin to plan for our next course in September. And Lord, we thank you for preschool. We thank you for all that took place, particularly on the last Tuesday, and we pray for the children as they enter their school holidays, at the end of which they'll be moving on into new schools. 
be with them and be with the staff as they move into new settings. May they be aware of our love and thanks. Go before them and help them to carry with them your love, your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before Katie comes to share with us, let's join together again in song, reminding ourselves that because of his great love for us, his unique standing in the whole of creation, our desire is to do everything that we can to do things in the way that Jesus would want us to do as we surrender ourselves to him. Let's stand and sing, Jesus, lover of my soul.
everyone. Surprise, surprise, we've got a game for us to play this morning. So, I think you've probably all played this or something like it before. I'm going to give you three clues, and at any time throughout the three clues, you can guess who the person is that I'm thinking of. And by the time I've got to clue three, you probably should know who it is, all right? Some of them are famous people, some of them are people in our church, some of them are completely made up fictional characters. All right, so we're going to have a practice run. So if I was to say to you, I have four sons. Okay, start thinking who you think it might be. I'm married to John. Any ideas yet? And if you don't know already, the last clue, my name starts with a K. So if you know who it is, you need to say, are you and the person's name. So, do you know who it is that I was talking about? Go on then. Are you Katie? Yes, I am. Well done. Okay, so, let's play it for real this time. I have four children. I have corgi dogs as pets. I often wear a crown. Are you the queen? Yes, I am the queen. <laughs> you never thought you'd hear me say that, would you? Um, well done. Okay. I also have four children. I work for a church. I am Scottish. Yes, I am, Tom. Well done. I was born in 1820. Now is it down a bit. I had an important role in the Crimean War. People sometimes call me the lady with the lamp. I am Florence Nightingale, well done. I fight crime. I often wear a mask. Not one of these. <laughs> I have a helper called Robin. I am Batman. Oh, you're doing well, so four out of four. I have a brother called George. I like jumping up and down in muddy puddles. <laughs> I am a pig. Any ideas who that might be? I am Peppa Pig. Some of you might not have got that one. Last one. I play the piano. I'm married to Liz. I have a daughter called Hannah. I am Steve. <laughs> well done. Excellent. So you could guess who these people were because either you knew them, you've seen them around, you've seen what they do, um, you've had some idea of who they are from, from the things that you've seen and heard about them, you've seen them on TV or you've heard about a young child talking about Peppa Pig, you haven't got no idea other than that, but you've heard about it. As I read out the clues, it gave you more of an idea as to who that person was. In our Bible reading today, someone asked Jesus directly, are you the Messiah? Which means the person who God's people had been waiting for to rescue them. The person didn't just have any old guess who Jesus was, he would have had some idea, because unlike in our game, when we only had three clues, he must have had loads more clues than that. Loads and loads and loads. His birth, his behaviour, his miracles, his teaching, the way he did things that it said he was going to do in the Old Testament, his ability to drive out demons, his command over the wind and the waves, his raising of the dead. These things wouldn't have just happened quietly without anyone knowing about them. <clears throat> they were amazing miracles. How many more clues should they have needed? Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God as a person, God with us. Sadly, the person asking Jesus the question in the Bible story was trying to trick Jesus because he wanted Jesus to be punished but couldn't find anything that Jesus has actually done wrong, obviously. But it's important for us today to know the answer to the question, are you the Messiah? Or we could ask, 
are you God's son who loved us so much that you died on the cross so that we could live? Because if the answer is, I am not, then all of Christianity would be pointless. And we would have made a terrible mistake because it's only through Jesus that we can be forgiven, have life in all its fullness, know a constant loving presence with us and be a part of God's family forever. And I'm very happy that the answer Jesus gave and still gives when we ask today is I am. And if you're not sure why this is so important or what it really means to be in God's family, please talk to someone or get in touch with us here and find out what a difference this can make in your life. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are the Messiah, that you love us, that you died and rose again, and that you are with us every second of every day. Amen. Thank you very much, Katie. And Tom will uh, pick up that theme again as he speaks to us a little later in the service. We're about to move into our time of intercessory prayer and to help prepare us for that, uh, to ensure that Jesus is at the centre of our lives as we worship him in song and in prayer in the place that we find ourselves this morning, we are going to sing Jesus Be the Centre. I invite you, wherever you are, joining us online here in the building, just to use this song to prepare ourselves for a time of prayer, to place Jesus front and centre of our lives. Let's sing this song together. we're going to give an opportunity for people who are here in church to come forward to lead us in our intercessory prayers. And as I said last week, two important things to bear in mind if you do come forward, and please do feel free to do so. Uh, but if you can, keep your prayer focused. And secondly, please don't say anything or share anything about another person that you don't have 
their permission to share. For those of you who are joining us online, please use the time to pray for uh, people or situations uh, that are on your heart and be assured of our amen to your prayers where you are praying at the moment. But first, let me give you an update on some members of our fellowship. Uh, Pam Meekins is receiving care and rehab support at Kick, and there her long-term care needs will be assessed as part of her time with them, as she always values our prayers. Alan Maynard slipped over in the garden. He was just picked this ripe strawberry that he was going to have for his lunch, and on his way in, he slipped and fell over. And at that moment, as Pauline wondered what she was going to do, there was a knock on the door, and the new delivery driver of their uh, medication uh, appeared. And she said, he was a big, strong chap. And I said, can you help me, said Pauline. And, and he came through, and he helped Pauline uh, get Ad, um, Alan up and back into the house. And she called him her guardian angel. So pray for uh, Alan, and also for the guardian angel that came to his rescue. Patsy Allen has asked us to pray that she will feel God's presence with her and Peter at this time. I spoke to Margaret Bush yesterday. As always, Margaret sounds so cheerful. Uh, she has carers who come and uh, visit her four times a day and she has the support of her family, her daughter and son-in-law around her, and she's very grateful for all the help and care and support that she receives. And I spoke to Jenny Baines yesterday, and she described how she and Ray are finding life very hard work and draining at the moment, and she has asked us to support them in our prayers. Other things that we can be praying about this morning, as you know, the lifting of the COVID restrictions tomorrow and at a time of concern as infection rates are rising and more and more people are receiving alerts from NHS Track and Trace. There are the floods that have happened in Germany and Western Europe in which 186 people have died, but the, the devastation that the floods have caused is enormous. There's the continued unrest in South Africa and other parts of the world and you may have read in the news the heart-rending situation of a young woman called Laura Souter. She is desperately wanting to get home in Scotland, to Scotland, to give her father a last hug before he dies. But she's caught up in all the sort of uh, tussle to do with isolation and quarantine rules. So we could pray praying for her as well. And you will know of other people and situations. So don't worry if there's a quiet time as, as we're waiting for people to come forward. Just use this time to pray for people and, and events that are on your heart. But let's pray. As we come to prayer this morning, let us rejoice in words from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I will fear no one. The Lord protects me from all dangers I will never be afraid. May I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. Hear me, Lord, when I call to you. Be merciful and answer me. When you said, come and worship me, I answered, I will come, Lord. Don't hide yourself from me. So for those of you here in church, if you want to come forward to pray for a person or situation, please use this opportunity while the worship band plays to do that.
just want us to pray as we enter to tomorrow's, well, let's not call it a new world, but something a lot of people are not familiar with. I pray that people's anxiety will not be raised by the removing of a lot of the restrictions tomorrow. People use common sense when going out, as we are doing now. Lord, I want you to give people the strength to be able to get through what's going to be a tough time. Cases are going to rise and more people are going to die. And I just pray that this pandemic can be over soon. Amen. Gracious God, I ask that you hold all the people of Palestine in your hands because it's not fair that people have to suffer through such oppression and violence. And I ask you, Lord, to protect all of the children in Palestine and in Gaza and to help to bring peace into the country. Amen. for all those people who have suffered through and because of COVID and because of the continuing anxiety that people have and the change in their lives. People's lives have been ruined financially and emotionally and pray that um, there is the right sort of support for them. Amen. Lord, we bring before you members of our fellowship, our families and our friends, our loved ones who are on our hearts and minds. Lord, perform the works of wonder you want to do in their lives. May they know your presence and peace. And when you call upon us to be, may we be channels of your peace, your strength and comfort. Lord, we thank you for the gift of prayer and for hearing our prayers today. May your will be done. Amen. So before Eunice comes to read uh, our lessons for today and Tom uh, with his sermon, let's stand and sing. This is, the, as we've heard already, the, the passage is about Jesus declaring himself to be the Messiah. And we're going to stand and sing that that song of praise that asks, is he worthy? And the answer that comes back is, yes, he is. So let's stand and sing to our great king. Do you know that all the hard ones are like 
priests and the elders and the scribes were assembled. And Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many bore false witness against him, and their witness did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, I heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet even so did their testimony agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he was silent and made no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his mantle and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You've heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! And the guards received him with blows. Here endeth the lesson this morning. May the Lord bless his word to us. Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, I'm sorry I'm not able to be there in person but I'm glad to be able to share with you this morning. This is our second last uh, morning looking at the book of Mark. We finish next week, but today's passage is really significant. Now, as we have moved through the book of Mark, hearing Mark's account of the ministry of Jesus, we have used different images to help us with each story that we've looked at. And today, our image is a mic drop. A mic drop is what happens at the end of a particularly powerful song. The singer drops it on the ground. There's nothing left for them to say. They've left everything out there and that's the end. That's the, the, the final thought that they have as they leave the stage. So what's been going on that today is a mic drop moment? Well, Jesus has been betrayed by Judas. He's been arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane by the Jewish temple authorities. He has been deserted by his closest followers. And it's either very late in the evening or very early in the morning. And we read that they took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests and elders and the teachers of the law came together. And Peter followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And there he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. Now, here is evidence of a conspiracy. And you see, it's not the time when people would usually be up, and it's not the time that the Sanhedrin would usually meet, and it's certainly not the time when the Sanhedrin would usually be making decisions. The high priest is Caiaphas. The chief priests, the elders, and the teachers of the law are what make up the Sanhedrin, the 70 uh, wise men. It's worth noting that within this group there would be Nicodemus who would become a follower of Jesus and who has that great conversation with Jesus in John chapter 3. As well, uh, there would be Joseph of Arimathea who would give up his own tomb to lay Jesus in. And there's Peter, one of Jesus' close followers who observes all that's going on in the company of the guards. This means that the likely source for the story has three witnesses, all who had quite different relationships with Jesus. And Peter sits with the guards. And we should be clear that these aren't Roman guards. Jesus hasn't yet been handed over to the Romans. These are temple guards with some level of authority and certainly strength of arms. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law want to put Jesus to death. 
They've been looking for any scrap of evidence against him. We've seen that in the last few weeks as uh, Jesus has taught in Jerusalem. He has been challenged and they've attempted to trip him up. They want him dead. But they want a legitimate reason to kill him. Even if that legitimate reason is somehow twisted, that's what they want. Even a Sanhedrin of these, uh, of 70 men like this could not be seen to operate above their own laws, especially since they claim to be upholding the law of God. So there are testimonies brought against Jesus, telling lies and half-truths. Oh, we've heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands, and in three days he build another not made with hands. Hmm. Now, from Mark's record, this is actually a, a, an accusation against Jesus that has some sense of touching the reality of what Jesus actually said. But even these words are muddled and confused by those speaking against Jesus. Jesus did speak about the temple falling down and there not being one stone stood on another. And of his own resurrection after three days. But even if Jesus did say this about the temple, that's still not going to be enough in terms of testimony to get Jesus killed. So the high priest stood up before the Sanhedrin and he asks Jesus, are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. This is like the prophecy in Isaiah 53. We read there that he was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before its shearer is silent so he did not open his mouth. It's also found in Acts chapter 8 verse 32 because that's the passage that the eunuch is reading when Philip meets him. And Philip goes on to explain that this passage in Isaiah 53 is about Jesus. And shortly after that exp explanation, the eunuch decides to get baptised. And we've looked at that passage not that long ago. So here in front of the Sanhedrin, Jesus doesn't answer any questions. He is silent just as Isaiah prophesied he would be. He's been arrested, he has been abandoned, and he does not seek to argue his way out of this moment. Because if he had spoken, he could have wowed them with his teaching once more. But the high priest has one more question. Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Now that, that is a great question. The term Messiah we are familiar with, it, it means the anointed one of God and has within it the meaning of the saviour promised all through the Old Testament. The term blessed one was a way for Jews to talk about God without saying God. It's what's known as a periphrasis. That means the high priest's question should be understood like this. Are you the Messiah, the son of God? Now, Mark has been trying to reveal to us the truth that Jesus is the Son of God. He has told us that this is his purpose in writing this account. And now here on the night of Jesus' arrest, Jesus is asked, are you the Son of God? And Jesus has so far said nothing. But he does answer this question. I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. I am. Boom. That is a statement. Does Jesus need to say any more after that? I am. I am the Son of God. I am the Son of the Blessed One. I am the Messiah, the one that you, all you Sanhedrin, have been waiting for. You know, when Moses was called by God to serve him and free the people of Israel, he was met by God in a burning bush. He asked God what he should say the name of this God who was sending him to his people was called. Whom should I say sent me? The answer from God, I am. I am is the response. I am is the name. God's revealed name to Moses and to his people. And now Jesus is asked a question by the high priest that he does answer. And his way of answering is to say, I am. I am. An admission and a prophecy. You will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. And at this, the high priest tears his formal priestly clothes. And he asks them all, 
Why do we need any more witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists, and they said, Prophesy. And the guards took him and beat him. Jesus has spoken blasphemy, so they say, enough to be able to sentence him to some sort of punishment, to death. And the Sanhedrin have finally found, after a real focus in trying, in trying to trip Jesus up, in trying to catch him out over the last few days, they have finally found something they can pin on him. And it comes from his own words. Now, blasphemy is specific to our understanding of God. If we blaspheme, we are speaking with direct offence to God. We are speaking sacrilegiously. For the Jews, God was and is the one true God. And whilst there was hope for the Messiah, the expectation of Jewish thinking and teaching would be that the Messiah was a, a man, a, a human, not, not God. Yet Jesus is God incarnate. He is the Son of God, and this is the focus of Mark's telling of his life of Jesus. Mark says Jesus is the Son of God. He has revealed that Jesus was baptised, that the Spirit of God fell on Jesus in the form of a dove, that there was a voice from heaven saying, This is my Son whom I love, and with him I am well pleased. Jesus has healed many people. He has cast out demons. He has taught with great power and authority. He has taken time alone with his father. He has forgiven people their sins. He has also called people to follow him and he has many followers. Jesus has also sent out his followers with the same power and teaching authority that he had except they were not sent out with the power to forgive sins. He has prophesied that he will die and that he will rise from death to life. Mark has clearly shown us that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, defying expectations. If Jesus is who Mark has shown him to be, then he's not a blasphemer, is he? He is simply and clearly speaking a truth. And his prophecy about seeing the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven points to the very truth of who he is. Not only does he now accept the title Messiah and Son of God, he prophetically points to him being seated in the future at the right hand of his Father, God. Now, if Jesus is just a man, a good man certainly, then all of this, all of this is a lie. Then Jesus is a blasphemer pretending to be God and speaking as though he is God. And if that's the case, then death is appropriate and the Sanhedrin have got it right. But if Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, as he now admits, then actually this should have been the most amazing moment in time for the faithful Sanhedrin. But instead he is spat upon, blindfolded, punched and taunted. Jesus had been silent. But when asked if he was the Messiah, the Son of God, he says, I am. Judas' betrayal got him to this point of arrest, but his own words now lead him to be taken to the Roman authorities and then to the cross. Jesus, Jesus could have carried on being silent, but his own words condemn him. He knew that they would. He knew that what he said in front of the Sanhedrin would cause his death. But he also knew that this time had to come. He knew how it would come and he knew when it would come. <laughs> Jesus knew what he was doing. This moment in the whole story that Mark gives us is huge. This is why we have this mic drop image. Jesus is the son of God. For us today, we are a people who follow Jesus. We know that Jesus' life, his death, his resurrection and ascension to his Father's side now means that we have the Holy Spirit living within us. We are part of the living church across the whole world. We are adopted into God's family through this. We are redeemed. We are justified. We are being sanctified and we are holy. Why? Because we live for a holy God who chose to save us before we ever knew we needed saving. We live for the one who is the Son of God. How will you live for him, given all he has done for you?
therein is the challenge to us all. And as ever, if any of you want to discuss any of the points that come up during the service this morning or to ask Tom questions, he will be very happy to receive any emails from you along those lines. We're coming to the end of our service and we've heard about Jesus, our Messiah, God's chosen and anointed one. But he is a loving king who knows all about strength in sorrow and beauty in our tears. He is with us no matter what and loves us with a love that drives out all fear. So as we bring our time of worship to a conclusion, let's offer ourselves to him and allow him to be sovereign over us and to use the words of our closing song as our prayer to him.
Let us end by saying the grace to each other. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. I trust you know God's grace, peace and mercy in the week ahead.